James Kaufman, World News Report today. Today's November 5th, 2023. Noon Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we've just had two Earth-directed M-class solar flares. The first one originated from AR-3480, and it was a 1.8 M-flare, and it definitely had an Earth component to it. The following M-flare also originated from Sunspot 3480. It was a 1.6 class M-flare, and it also had an Earth component to the coronal mass ejection that was emitted from it. So we have two back-to-back M-flares, and I will show you where that sunspot is. All right, here is 3480. We've had 3481 just named, and 3480, the sunspot that generated both the M-flares, has actually rotated into the central part of the disk. This was taken last night at 8 p.m. Central Time. So you can imagine that it's moved quite a bit since then and would most definitely have an Earth component to any coronal mass ejection that was emitted. In the meantime, we're being hit by a very strong geomagnetic storm, i.e. a coronal mass ejection. We have been for over the past six hours. And if we go to just the estimated planetary index, the upgrade used by NASA and NOAA is showing that we're in a G2 geomagnetic storm currently, right here. Now, some of the other ones show that we're in a G1 and a G2 and 1 combo here. But if we go with the actual KP index that NOAA and NASA uses, we're in a G2 geomagnetic storm. And they are expecting this to turn into a G3 geomagnetic storm before the day is through and into tomorrow as well. The question is, is where did all this plasma come from? Taking a look at our GO solar ultraviolet imager, 195 angstroms. We have a whopper of a coral hole directly earth facing. That means that we're in for more geomagnetic storms over the next 48 hours in the form of solar winds. And those should be very strong solar winds. It's a very large coral hole. And it's definitely earth facing. So what we're going to do is we're going to strictly guess here. And we're probably going to guess correctly. November 3rd, we had the big filament eruption. And that's probably what you're seeing right here. They're looking, they're looking for 12 hours of a geomagnetic storm, although we've already had six hours of a G2 geomagnetic storm. Now, they're carrying that over, and then on the 6th, they're looking for another impact. They have actually mentioned a G3 impact. Could this be a combination of the coronal mass ejection and the solar winds? I'm not quite sure, but that's what it looks like. It's a very, very long-lasting coronal mass ejection created by that huge filament eruption. Are we being hit by radiation? We're being hit by tons of radiation. That's your first M-flare, the M1.8 class solar flare. Seems to hit exactly where the last few have off the coast of Africa. And we have a second M-flare that comes into play at about, well, right about now. You can see that it's fairly strong as well, if I can get to the peak of it. This one popped off over Brazil and most all of South America, some of Central America, the Caribbean, and all of the Atlantic Ocean. So two M-flares thus far today, both from a non-complex sunspot, 
that is basically earth facing. All right, so here we go. This is where the day started. We did have heavy plasma, as we know yesterday. We went over that. But today started here at 0, 100. That would have been 8 p.m. last night. Uh, everything was fairly quiet until around 8 UTC time. When we had plasma just shoot straight up to 35 centimeters cubed you can see that the shields are raised they're in blue here so we're having a much better chance they got peppered they're working like a callus they got peppered here so they were ready for the second hit well this second hit shows almost 50 uh, centimeters cubed 49.77 centimeters cubed and this coronal mass ejection continues there's a 61.93 continues to wallop a 63.67 and it slowly looks like it's subsiding but it's still registering a 24.23 so it looks like we've been at this for over nine hours again. Seems to be the magic number. We'll see if this subsides or not, but I'm guessing that the next KP index print will prove that we're still in that heavy chrome mass ejection created by that filament that left the sun on November 3rd. What's up for tomorrow? My guess is a combination of this plasma, if it continues, plus the solar winds that we know are inbound at around 700 kilometers per second. It should be quite an interesting day. They are calling for a G3 geomagnetic storm. I'd like to say that we've seen some very heavy plasma here uh, up upwards of 60 and even higher than that centimeters cubed uh, and I would think that that would cause more than a G1 or G2 geomagnetic storm that's basically off the charts but we'll see what that next actual marker has to say i.e. the KP index jumping over to SDO 193 angstroms on the left, 171 on the right. Huge crawl hole, earth facing. Those winds are on the way. And this is 3480. We don't see much happening, but that's where both influence were generated from. Uh, I do see a filament rope there, and I just don't see the flares. We'll take a look at 171 to see if it's any more visible, and it very well might be. You can see more activity at 171 angstroms here. There was one, and there was probably another right there. So, for one of the first times ever, these actual solar flares are more visible at 171 angstroms than they are at 193. Remember, the coronal hole brings very strong solar winds i.e. another solar storm but this time not a coronal mass ejection solar winds from the coronal hole with that said let's hang on tight we just had our, another pretty decent sea flare and the day is far from over i will keep you updated if anything major occurs just know we're in a G2 to G3 geomagnetic storm. We've already had two Earth-facing M flares, and there's a very good chance of more flares directed towards Earth with coronal mass ejections associated with them. God bless. Share, subscribe, and always remember, anything's possible in bizarro world.